everybody, my name is Phyllis Y. Whitley. If you have been spiritually victimized and traumatized, welcome to Spiritology Live, where I bring my number one Amazon bestseller book to life. Yes, each episode will be a raw, spiritual, metaphysical, holistic space of consciousness for self-healing as you learn how to break your religious shackles so you can master, manifest your promised land within today. Let's go. Hello, 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 everyone. I am so happy to be back doing my episodes. I had finished a couple of them. And once they go through the editing phase, by my uh, podcast editor, then they all come together and they, you know, I schedule them. So it's a process. This is not easy. I thank God that I have somebody who's taking care of the hard part. Or do I feel like the hard part is getting on here and trying to put a message through? Yes, we do uh, go through my book. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of Wean from it a little bit, like I did in the last couple episodes. We discussed with the help of my Whispervise team. We had something dealing with healing. We deal with generational curses. We deal with uh, discipleship, and now we are going to continue to feed you, feed your spiritual self. Okay, and by doing that. You are building your spiritual man. Yes, yes, yes. So that that spiritual man can have more control over the flesh. You know, why do I need control over my flesh? Because your flesh is the one that go out there and do a little bit of everything. Your flesh is what the pastors and preachers get up there and talk about all day long. So without telling you, unfortunately, what you need to do to discipline yourself, disciple ship. We talked about that. If you didn't hear about that, you need to go back and please listen to that episode because it really will tell you the difference why Jesus walked with disciples and what do disciple discipline really mean. Uh, When you come here, I tell you what your pastor won't tell you, okay, or probably don't know because he's probably so into his flesh. He don't know how to feed his spirit, his or her spirit. So uh, we also did generational curses. Very, very, oh my God. If you missed that, you missed everything. We talked about the healing. And unfortunately, I heard some bad news that was going on with some of my distant relative. And it was really a sad report. But at the same time, it had a lot to do with the healing process. What we put in our system, uh, the medical community refused to really look at the food. You know, I am a strong believer that the food literally go into your body. And if it's not, you know, how they say garbage go in, garbage come out. And a lot of people are not letting the garbage come out. This is why um, God in the, is it God in, I forgot the name of it. And they got this new thing where they say the females poop. And I I really commend them. But what they did is green green food already make you poop. So they just said, hey, let's take our green food and attach it to this of making women go to the bathroom. And literally, now they're just going to be like... really expanded because nobody wants to say, here, go drink this green. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to, you know, do things for their body to make your body flow. Speaking of which, we are talking, what are we talking about? (laughs) Oh my God, you know, we're talking about something very good. I have heard all my life as a consultant and coach and mentor about manifesting but also about delayed manifesting. This episode is going to really be about spiritual decluttering because a lot of people don't know. They 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 write the vision board. They have it. They write it plain on paper. They have everything. 
Some of them don't know the other techniques. That's what I'm here for on a spiritual true side. And they said, well, you know, I still didn't get this. I still didn't get this. And this is still, you know, my blessings are just like it's, it's just stagnant. And I'm here to give you some um, some tips. So what we're going to talk about in this episode is really how to spiritually declutter. Yeah, I heard about that. I think I had uh, input it in many of my episodes. But what we're going to talk about today is... I don't know if y'all know about the Chinese art and practice called feng shui, feng shui, and I might be saying it a little bit off, but that is really a practice that clears your natu- natural flow of energy for balance. It has a lot to do with the way your furniture is, is um, positioned in your house or home. It's a lot of different things. The clothing is all kind of stuff that they they really believe in. Some of the stuff that I practice, but I go by my own spiritual guise of what my spirit is saying to me. Other than that, we are going to talk about decluttering, but we are going to be talking about spiritual decluttering. Now, feng shui, feng shui literally concentrate on the physical part. Okay, but how about getting your spirit balance? Your spirit should be balanced. How is this balanced? Because you got the physical man and you got the spiritual man. And normally when you're born and you don't have no no idea, your mother or your father or your parents don't teach you nothing about a higher source, a higher God, then you're just walking around and you don't even know who you are. So how do you balance something if you don't know what you're balancing? Amen. With that being said, spiritual declutter. You need to declutter things around you because it's clogged and manifestation can't go through that. It can't push through that. Just think about a clogged drain. All of your stuff. Stuff, all of your spiritual bad thoughts, your bad words, your bad pain, your bad whisper. It's, it's just a pipe, a drain pipe. And everything is so clogged. And then you turn around and you say, oh, I want to bring in the new. And somebody said, do some affirmation, do this, do this, do this. And you do it. But then, you know, it's like, well... I don't understand why nothing is coming. Then you go back and forth. We talked about this with prayer in one of my podcasts. And you go back and forth to God every five minutes. God, where, where, where? I didn't know. Did you hear my prayer? God, you bless my cousin. You bless this person. Where's my prayer? And it's stuck. Manifestation is, think of it to make it plain of being pregnant. Every person who's pregnant or they don't have the baby the same date but if you compare them to like an animal a a chicken um, elephant a human the pregnancy stages is different that's your manifesting stages you will not manifest something normally at the same time so i have seen i i have witnessed me personally manifesting something that was in within 24 hours sometime within minutes but then at the same time something else may take one year two year or you look up as the 10 year a lot of people say i want it now instant i want i want that man now oh wow i want why i can't get it i know that's my husband blah 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 blah, blah. i want that man now but you know what they forget decluttering and that's really preparation i'm not talking about preparation h and maybe i should because it is a spiritual hemorrhoid hello that's blocking you is painful. You ever notice that? If you had hemorrhoids, I'm keeping it raw. It's painful. It's painful for you to do what you need to do. It's painful for all of that garbage to come out. So you rather not, I don't want to go there. I don't go there. When your body says, come on and push it, I don't want to go there. 
So that's the same. Even when you're pregnant, painful. They say push, and you think, oh, I don't want to push. You understand? And push, push, because what comes out, you got all the stuff that, the you know, we don't want to get that raw but the point i'm saying is all that junk and gunk even in the drain pipe have to be released when it's released you notice think about drain though everything goes flowing through so beautiful and that's when you see blessing on top of blessing on top of blessing that's when you are in your promised land don't get me wrong Yes, life, as long as you're living on this earth, in this planet, in this plane, you're going to have things that come through you because other people, you're picking up other people's thoughts, family members, best friends. So life will continue to happen. It's how you react to it. And yes, you can still enjoy your promised land. That's why you have to be careful. You don't want to bring your co-workers problems to your home. You don't want to bring your family problems to your home. Honestly, you can help somebody, but then when you go into your home and you lock that door, that should be your castle. And I mean, I'm really talking about your mind. You know how you bring somebody problems in and you go home and think, oh my goodness, oh, they so-and-so-and-so. Or somebody tell you gossip. Oh, they getting ready to fire people. Oh, so cleaning out the clutter is literally your mind, body, and soul. Or should I say mind, body, and spirit? Okay, how how Miss P? How Miss P? How Miss P? A lot of the a lot of the gems that I have for this one is in majority of my podcasts. Okay. And I know now that we got some pastors that are listening and evangelists and even people that do Bible stories or should I say Bible classes, are listening to my podcast so they can go ahead and get their topic. I'm not mad at you, but I can see that. Okay? I'm not mad at you. But you're still not going to do it this way because you're not going to do it the way I do it because I'm unique and I'm different and you are different. So when God gives you a call and you can learn from someone and you can be coached from someone, but you got to take that recipe And mix it with your love and your talent and make it come out even better. So it can so it can it can really be you. Oh, you know who made this chili? Mm. Nobody make it like her. It become your original brand. So that's why I say copycats are imposters. They are fake. They have no identity. So they have to live through everybody else's identity, not understanding they missing who they really are. This is why you have to train your children that they have their own identity. They are don't have to want to look like someone because they got, you know, they're very popular in school. Because the religious shackles in the entertainment world keep putting a poster woman up to make you think, oh, I got to look like her. And then the men look and say, oh, they see it in a commercial. They see it advertised. The advertised may have re- religious shackles. Entertainment have religious shackles. And then you you get accustomed, especially your young sons, to get accustomed and say, oh, that must be normal. Oh, we can do that? Oh, that's normal. That Oh, oh okay. Oh, that's the beautiful, most beautiful person in the world. Is that the way they look? Then they go searching for it. And they look at you, the people in their own household, and look at you as if you are not beautiful. And then you look in the mirror and say, well, I don't look like this. I don't look what they put in the store. I don't look like the dolls that they have here. No. What do this got to do with spiritual decluttering? Get all of the gut and ilk and the false labels and the false lies out of your mind. In order for you to go forth, mothers, hear me. You don't let labels stop you. You, this is for you to move forth in your promised land, in your calling, in the marketplace. You can't be nobody. Your uniqueness uniqueness might be how many kids you have and how many kids you don't have. I was one person who went to jobs and I, you know, and I went from job to job to job. I got bored easily. And sometimes I didn't even care. 
And you know what happened? I just, I just got, as I grew older, I won't say mature, I was at a point where I was like, I worked everywhere and I admire people who went out there and they got a job and they stayed it. You know, stayed there for 10, 20, 30. Basically, they stayed there, some of them, and retired. And that was the old days. Now with the pandemic, everybody had to pivot and do something totally different from brick and mortar to online to invisible brick and mortar. So uh, you have to know how to pivot. And I do believe, that's why I believe in having several strains of income. Because if one income go down, you have those other incomes. Well, Miss P, how do we do that? That's something that I would have to have a class on. Or <laughs> well, you got to come to me for personal consultation because I will teach you. With that being said, all the vision boards, all writing it down, all of feminization, all everything that you do is not going to help you. It's not going to help you if everything is cluttered. Okay? How is a couple things you do? I'm going to tell you about meditation. You must know and learn how to meditate. I know religious shackles tell you, oh, they, you know, don't Christians, the Christian community, do not meditate. That is Buddha. That is that. I mean, you don't supposed to be doing that. That's Hindu. That's whatever. And they don't even know how to meditate. Meditation is all in the Bible. I was shocked. Yes, meditation. You don't believe, okay, don't believe me. Let's go to Philippians 4 8. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That is in the word. So please don't come to me and tell me, oh, Miss P, I don't know what you're talking about meditation. You're not supposed to be meditating. That's not the God. Christian, religious shackle Christians, you know what the problem is? They think everything is Satan, it's the devil. And, and, and you know what? It's no such thing as the, the man or the woman in the red horns. When you walk around and say, the devil made me do it. Okay? I hope you're playing and, and copying of Flip Wilson. But when you walk around, you know that's the devil. You know the, and, I, and I'm like, and I, I, I recall telling somebody, you know the devil worked really hard in your life. Every time you call me, the devil did something. I said, where's your God? The next time you keep saying the devil, I want you to go, I want you to go find him. Go in your bathroom, listen, turn on your light, and look in the mirror. Hello? And I bet you would never say that again. Meditation is from God. It is off God. Do you understand me? You need to meditate. What is telling you right there is these things that come in your air gate. Your five senses, the air gate, your eye gate, your feel gate, your taste gate, the five senses. I don't think I've named all of them. The smell gate, all of those things you control. Now, you can't control if you go to the bakery and you smell bread and chocolate and you know good and well, you don't need any more chocolate. I ain't got nothing to do with it. But you want to know these things for your habitat, for your castle. Because these are the things that heighten you and make you stronger, make your spiritual, more a spiritual awareness. And it is a good place to have. This is what you need to have when you meditate, when you meditate, when you go pray. Other religions have it. They have a space for prayer. I watch HGT all the time and it really frustrates me or deepens my heart make it heavy and say, well, why Christians don't say, oh, oh, I need a a private room for meditation. And they need it. Boom. They don't want to meditate because they're religious shackles. Your pastor have been lying to you and telling you, blame it on the devil. No work. Just pray, cry, and go crazy. And you know what? God is going to answer you, darling. 
I can't tell you how many times I went to I went to different churches. God is going to answer your prayer. God's going to answer your prayer. God's going to answer prayer. And I'm standing up here looking at this person. I said, well, really? Well, why is everybody laying out on the altar crying? He ain't answer their prayer. So why is he going to answer my prayer? And I'm just visiting you. Hello? So meditation is talking about these are things that are true of you. So a label is not true of you. Hmm. Well, Miss P, you walk around the world and the news is on or whatever. And how can, you can control it. Nobody said that you have to sit up there and watch the 11 o'clock news and go to sleep right after. Nobody said you have to wake up in the morning and find out who killed who. Nobody said that you have to have the obituary at lunchtime. You know, you can see these things, read it, because now they have it on the Internet. Don't you know they, they know how to get to your air gates and your five senses? And I keep saying air gates, but it's basically all your gates. And they know how to bring the bad. That's where you have to have this soul plant. Need to get that particular listen to that episode. So you discipline your mind. Meditation. You can leave your job or even at lunchtime, go in your car, go somewhere and have a moment of meditation so you can clean out the drain in your mind, body and soul. That meditation is what it says. Anything that's praiseworthy, anything that is good, you have to literally soak that meditation up. Again, and I was reading from, I believe that's the Hormon standard. So a version, so the different versions I have of the Bible, you, I, I believe you should have two or three so you can get an understanding more clarity. The next one is imagination. Imagination. Yeah, I know about that. It's just your imagination. Run away. I'm not even going to start the saying. Who was that from? The Temptations? Isn't the name funny? Temptation. And they all, a majority of them died of uh, kind of a bad death. We're not going to go there because that's a gen, that's generational whew, curses coming to wipe you out. With that being said, imagination, yes, yes, and yes. Daydreams. I got that in my book. Mm-hmm. I talk about that in my book. Daydreaming. Oh, I don't know how. I just can't imagine. Yes, you can. Remember when you fell in love. You did your most imagination when you had that puppy love. Remember when you sat back and you just daydream when you go to school and you see him or you see her? Remember that? When they smile at you? You know when you thought you was in love and you tell your mother, I gotta, I'm going to go and retire early because you just want to spend most of your time before you go to sleep just thinking about that person or you want to get on the phone and talk to them for hours. And some of y'all are doing that now. So this is not only with young love. And you just talk and talk and some of y'all talk and, it's, and you just hear their voice. And next minute, you know, you wake up and say, oh, my God, I, I went to sleep in the, with the phone with my. Oh, and you can listen, daydream, imagination. Yes. Go for it. Go for it. See, do you understand? A architecture. Yes, an architecture. Design buildings. Do you know he see his completed design? And if he don't see it all at once, he see it in different phases. This is what you need to have in your mind. You understand? Well, Miss P, what did that got to do with the decluttering? Because you can declutter, but you got to replace something. You want that water. Water is life. You want it to flow throughly. You want your manifesting the flow Truly, I'm, I'm, I believe I'm talking to people who say, you know, they want to declutter spiritually because they want to live in their promised land and manifest things that they want. It's not coming to them and they tired of it going to everybody else. But they forget. What are you doing to declutter? You can't put old wine skin into. Or should I say. A new wine skin into an old wine skin bottle. Oh God, did I? Read that? That's in the Bible. You get what I'm picture? What I'm talking about? Picture it. Get a glass of wine, fill it to the rim, 
then go get a new bottle of wine and pull it in it. It's going to spill over. This is what's happening with many of y'all, y'all life. Nothing is going right. Everything is going right, wrong. And then you're setting up in the air and some things are coming out good. It's a chain effect. So I can guarantee you when people come to me, when females come to me and they say, oh my goodness, I mean, life is just going to, I just don't understand why God is not answering my prayer. I don't understand what do God have for me? What do God want for me for the future? Oh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And you know what? The first thing I stop and I say, what's going on with the man in your life? It's a domino effect. Declutter. Even when you go into your next relationship, people do not understand. If you don't declutter, you're going to take the same, just think about it as a bag, and you're going to take that same bag to the next relationship. And every time, if you was cheated on and you a man, when you go to that next woman, you're not going to trust her. Call her, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Vice versa. If you was hit on, you're going to go to that next person. And then a lot of people, they 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 attract because they keep that person in their psycho psyche and they meditate on what that person did. And then when they go and they attract that next person, the same person, that's a whole nother thing. I'm going to talk about that one day. But like I said, meditation, Philippians 4, 8. And then when we have imagination, well, you want proof? Okay. Habakkuk 2, 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on a tablet that he may run who needs it. Do you understand what I'm saying? That tablet is writing your goals and writing in a journal. But how about writing in your mind? That architecture have his building and plans in his mind. And you know what he do? He transfer it on paper because it becomes permanent once it got that pen or pencil in there. Well, I don't want to say pencil because you're going to erase that. But do you understand what I'm trying to say? They have it in their mind and then they transfer it. Do you have it in your mind? Meditation, imagination, do you understand is going to bring manifestation. Did you get that? Some of some of y'all, it went right over your head. And that's why you need to go back and listen to every tape, every episode. Excuse me. And I, you know, I'm still back in the 90s. <laughs> you need to listen to every episode for a reason. You ain't doing me a favor. You're doing yourself a favor. I'm here to show you how to make it and to get on your promised land today. And you're not on your promised land so you can show off and try to uh, compete with the Jones. Listen, copycatters. Un- listen, if they fake and phony, you are here. So when you get your promised land, you can go out there and you can bless your family. You can bless your neighborhood. And the bigger your promised land, your promised land might not be like my promised land. So that's why you don't need to copy. Okay? And s- don't get mad and don't get shame and don't talk about the person who have a promised land that they just help in their community. Because that community can help the next community and could help their family, can help. You don't know how far that's going to go and down in legacy versus trying to help millions because you can't help millions. Jesus can save everybody. It's people who don't want what you have. It's, it is different people out there made for different people, counselors, mentor, whatever. So don't get stuck on it. Just remember meditation. Just remember imagination and then there's other stuff it is so many things that you can do to declutter and i'm going to talk about that in my next episode hmm well 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 now that you know who i am go get your promised land tell everybody on social media give everybody my a link to my podcast is everywhere. It's everywhere. It's on Amazon, Spotify, Apple, whatever, whatever, whatever. Go, just go find it. Red Circle, and don't miss your opportunity to get the book. Now, I did a little bit of stuff, little gems that you, you know, or it's gonna always come from my book. 
because it's all the whole meshes. I've been just giving you a little bit of dessert. The book is the whole meal. What's new? School started. Oh, we're going to talk about Axe, Jalen. Yes, yes. It's that book. Help me promote it. It needs to be out there. It needs to be in the hands of those who have been bullied, verbally abused, and been labeled. Other, th other than that, I have the newsletter, I have the blogs, um, and basically I'm getting ready to release one of my books, one of the two books that I'm working on. So I just want you to remember this. If loving self is right, you don't want to be wrong.